Ezen a, az, amiért szerintem mindannyian itt vagyunk, hogy végre megnyíljon a Gábor Zsozsa Múzeum, az első a világon, ki tudja, hogy hány fogja még követni, és ezekben eredeti valódi relikviákat láthatunk, hogy ezek pontosan micsodák, mi a történetük, hiszen mindegyiknek megvan a sajátos története. Ezt tisztelettel kérem Frederick Pinson Alhátot, hogy jöjjön és mesélje nekünk rajta. Sir, the floor is yours, please talk about the different items in the museum and please open the museum. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Well, I have everything, but I don't know nothing. <laughs> I lived with a Gabors for 35 years, and in 35 years I picked up two words. Again, hot what? That's all. <laughs> and they said, you don't have to speak Hungarian. You don't want to listen to what we are talking about. So you never know if you're bad boss here, if you are good. You never know. Just don't listen. Anyhow, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for inviting me first, and then thank you very much, all of you, to come. So many representatives from different embassies, different countries. I saw them already, I recognized them already. And I don't remember all the names, so I would say, uh, welcome friends and fans of Jaja Gabor. Uh, it's a great pleasure being here, talk to you, uh, being in Hungary, being in Budapest, uh, my voice this morning, it's not so good because I was in Budapest last night and you guys don't go home. You know, it's getting long, it's getting very early in the morning when I go home. So anyhow, that's your fault, not my fault. You know, I be pulled in all the time. So, it's wonderful we have a small museum now. Zsasha always wanted everything. She wanted everything and she got everything. This is why we've been married for 33 years and together 35 years. Because she got a husband who gave her everything. Everything he could give her, not the other. She kicked out eight, but she kept me. So, you see, and I'm still in charge and I still try to manage the Budapest thanks to uh, the uh, um, Oregon Film Studio, uh, the CEO, uh, Marta, she is here right now. Her last name, very hard to spell. I'm so sorry. I, I, I never do scripted stuff. I'm not an actor. I do reality. So. It's and enough, Marta. Thank you. And uh, then, of course, uh, uh, the um, uh, Hungarian uh, Hollywood Council, Borgo. Balas, is that right? Borgo Balas. Okay, I got him. He's, he's smiling. It's, it's all okay. It's not bad of it. It's okay. So anyhow, uh, thanks to them, we got it done. They called me. We like to do that. Are you okay? Would you like to help us? And I said, sure, I help you. And then I got some items over, items you would see, but that's nothing. That doesn't mean anything. Because if I would have known a half year earlier, I would have brought many, many other things over. So it will happen. Things will come over. Uh, some antiques, some wonderful things like uh, we have the Hollywood star right in front, the Jaja Gabor Hollywood star. But the most important thing for the Hollywood star is the coin. That coin. Everybody wants that coin. But the coin is in my safe. It's a silver coin. If you don't have that coin, you don't have a star. And for all those people, you know, to explain what it means a Hollywood star, what it means to be a Hollywood star in Hollywood, you can only call yourself Hollywood star if you really have a star on the walk of fame. That's when you are a Hollywood star. Otherwise, you're just only a famous, you're an actor, or whatever you do. But a Hollywood star, you have this thing, and Jaja has it. So, and here we go, we have it here. She has it in Hollywood on the walk of fame and she has it on her grave side. You will see it. It will happen today. We will put it on the plate on you can see it. So now to explain a little bit of the items we have in there. Unfortunately from here I can't see it here. So, but I remember we have four dresses there. So when Martha called me and, and uh, she saw all the antiques, she said, uh, how about a couple of dresses? So it's very hard for me because I kept 32 dresses. 
and the auction house, when they came out, that the house was loaded with stuff, I couldn't take it with me. So I had to auction it off. But those 32 dresses, I kept in a different room. Nobody knew. And they asked me, where are the dresses, where are the dresses? I said, no, they're mine. I'm not giving it away. So I had to say to dress it Now, what kind of dress do I give to Budapest, to the museum? So I started with the first one, the red one. The red one, of course, very important. She made all the red carpets. She actually became very, very famous with the red one. So the red one I wanted to have first. The second one, it was kind. She went into the White House and, and met many presidents and stuff like that. Uh, that's the one. The third one, is the yellow and white. The yellow and white comes from Georgia of Beverly Hills. Now, Georgia of Beverly Hills, Fred Heyman, he was Swiss, and he, gave, he came to America, he came to Rodeo Drive and made it. He was the biggest guy on Rodeo Drive, and all the big stars went to him and got a dress, he did it, and then he said, I need to make, make one Georgia dress, yellow and white. Who's going to wear it? Is it Liz Taylor? Who's going to wear it? And he decided Zsa is going to wear it, because Zsa is the most photographed. She is not the biggest star in Hollywood, but she is the most photographed on the carpet. And that was important for him, the most picture, and the picture went around the world. So the white and yellow, I also gave to him museum because that's Georgie of Beverly Hills, which became later on Fred Heyman, very big for their drive. Now we come to the main dress. The main dress is the white dress you will see in here. Now, this dress I actually didn't want to give away, but, you know, Martha was so nice to me and everybody said, you have to, we need something special. I said, all right, you're going to get the dress Zsa was wearing when she slapped the cop. That's it, because that was the biggest story in America. Slapping a cop, and you go to court, you can settle this case in three hours. Not with Jasha Gabor. With Jasha Gabor, it took just 14 days. Not three hours, 14 days. So this dress was so important. And everybody wanted that dress. I said, no way, this is going to stay. But for the museum, you see, Jasha passed away five years ago. But now she is alive again. So I'm giving her stuff back to her because she is here. She is right over there. This is her museum. And she's getting more alive because we do more things after the museum. She will have a bronze statue, maybe we name a street after her. And what we are going to do together with the Oregon Studio and the um, Hungarian Hollywood Council making a television series about Jasha Kapoor and a motion picture, a movie about Jasha Kapoor. That's in the making right now and hopefully we're going to get it done and you will really like it because the stories about Jaja Gabor, you just google them in and you will see it and that's it. But what we have to tell you, it's different because there are thousand untold stories. I'm saying thousand, there are even more. Untold stories when our gate closed and nobody could see it and nobody could hear us anymore. That's when everything started. The big thing, the good thing, beautiful things, wild things, nasty things. It all happened in the house. And not only with Jasha, with Eva, with Magda, with Jolie, everybody. And of course all the friends who came, like the presidents. When Ronald Reagan moved into Bel Air, he came to the house. Nancy came to the house. Bush came to the house. They all came to the house. Liz came to the house. And there was always something going on, big things. But it was never told. It was never told, and I promise not to say anything. But what I'm going to do right now, so many people ask me already in Budapest, why don't you write a book? Why don't you do anything? There's no book out. Right now, here, I'm going to promise you, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to write a book, and you will love it. It's going to be a bestseller, it's going to be in Hungarian, it's going to be in German, and it's going to be in English. And that book will sell, and you will love it. You're not going to read five or six pages and go to sleep, and the next day, you're going to read the book at one night, because you cannot lay it down, you can't stop it. It is so big, so beautiful, so nasty, so wild, it's done. You will love it. And I do it for you Hungarians. Now, I'm saying you Hungarians, you know why I said it? Because that was when 
Zaschag and the whole family came to America. It was never the Gabors. It was those Hungarians. Look at the Hungarians are coming about now. And also the other famous Hungarian people, the directors, uh, the producers, never by name. Those Hungarians, look, those Hungarians are here. Now they are starting. It was always the Hungarians. So I believe uh, the Gabor clan and all those famous producers and directors, those are the people. They put Hungary on the map. And this is why we should celebrate them now. Because they put Hungary on the map. They did it. Merv Griffin once said, Merv Griffin, Mr. Television in America, uh, was interviewed once at NBC. And they asked him, you know, the Gabors, you know, Eva Gabor very well, where did they come from? And Merv said, you know what, they popped out like mushrooms. And all of a sudden, they were here. And we placed them. And we placed them well, and they made a career. And they made a big career. With Jasha, we don't have to talk about her movies. She was not so famous for the movies. But she was famous, she was a celebrity. Jasha, Wherever she went around the world, they opened the doors for her. If it was in Washington, if it was Beckingham Palace, wherever, they opened the door and Jascha made the last step, she went in. And of course, I was behind her going also in, you know. I mean, I was kind of shy, you know. I was like, if Jascha goes, I'm the husband. You know, I might as well go in too. So I met him also, Jascha. Very powerful lady in Hollywood, very powerful. When the biggest stars walked the red carpet at the Oscars, they all walked in front of Jaja. Not because Jaja was late, Jaja was sitting in the car. I said, why are you sitting in the car? She said, let them go. And then when, they were, when everybody was inside, Jaja went out. And she walked the red carpet and she was there. And they did not stop taking pictures. They took thousands of pictures. I remember at that time it didn't have the digital, you know, we had the film rolls, you know, so it wasn't so easy, you know. But they did, they did, they changed, they did, they changed, they did, you know, they wanted so many pictures. So she knew exactly what she was doing. Tough woman, like all the Hungarians. When I meet Hungarians here, I met a lot of ladies since I come here, they're tough people. But being in Hollywood, you have to be even tougher. And I think because of being tough and having the Hungarian discipline, and then the last thing, the beauty. Hungarian discipline and beauty. With those three things, you can only make it in Hollywood because that's what Hollywood needs. And they made it. They made it big time. They became rich, they became famous, everything. So what did I forget? I forget. I, huh? Did I forget something? <laughs> so after the after this ceremony, uh, we are going to go to the, the national cemetery, and she will get her plate today. It's very simply done, but it's beautifully done. No age order, no numbers. Shasha never wanted any numbers. She didn't believe in numbers. She didn't believe in numbers because she didn't want people to know how old she is. And that's Hollywood. But Shasha started. That's the last thing I want to tell you. Well, Jascha Gabor went to Munich once. Uh, it was two days before we had to go to America. And it was, uh, the Monday was an American holiday. So Jascha said to me, get everything ready because we have to go in two days. And I said, okay, and I went to the back, you know. I looked at everything, I got my tickets, my, my passport. I said, Jascha, I can't find your passport. I said, I don't know about that. I said, I can't find your passport. Anyhow, we had to go to the consulate, to the American consulate, and we had to get a new passport. So we took some pictures, we went there. Uh, she went inside with the consul. I was sitting outside. I wasn't even allowed to go in. I don't know what they did in there, but I'm sure she got a pass. But so, and a half an hour later, she came, she had a passport. I didn't take the passport. She said, I put it in my bag. I don't want to lose it again. So we went to America. And 14 days later, I get a letter from the Bajor of Munich, a big envelope, I open it, and there was the old passport. And there was a note, we found it in the trash. So I said, well, why in the trash? So <laughs> I put the old passport to the new one, and I opened them both up, and now I know why she found it in the trash, because in her new one, she made herself just 
ATS 样样。So the first time she got away, you know, and she got away with it because she was talking to the consul himself, not to an employee. So the consul, you lift your hand and everything is done, and she did it, you know. So that's how they, that's how they been, you know. Jasha got away with everything. Nobody wanted to touch her. Nobody wanted to do anything. Jasha got away with everything. Her desk in there, I did not want to give the desk away. The last five years, it was my desk. Everything I had in it. But when she asked me, I said, all right, I'm going to give the last thing the desk. And that beautiful desk, I was sitting with Jasha. She got it from short Charters. Short charters. Now that desk moved in and out of the house because George Sanders bought it from England. He was married to Jaja Gabor, then he divorced Jaja Gabor, then the Palm Springs married Magda Gabor, then he took the desk to Magda, then uh, Magda couldn't stand him, so Magda brought him out, he came back to Hollywood, brought back the desk and got married to Jaja again. You know, that, that's how it was, you know, that, that's what they do in Hollywood, you know, getting married, divorced a little bit, you know, back and forth, who cares, you know, it, it, it's an everyday thing. So this desk is really a treasure. This desk is a treasure. And, and uh, uh, the main thing what, uh, was so funny for me. Uh, we did all the mail there. Every morning we did the mail there. It took us about two hours to get through. And then we had to write check and checks. And the funniest thing was, Jasha had to sign the checks. So when she got the check, I had the invoice, the check, and Jasha signed it. She said, I'm not going to sign it. She taught the check. We make a new one. She always took 50% of every invoice. She said they are too expensive. If it was the plumber, the electrician, whoever came, 50% off. You are too expensive. Take it or leave it. If you don't take it, you don't get anything. That's how she did it. And she got away with it. On the end, I had to talk to those people. I had to talk to the plumber and the electrician and say, look, if you write a bill again, make it 50% higher because she takes 50% off. You know? She got away with it. So that's it. <coughs> and hopefully I get away with it now and leave it up to you. I want you to enjoy it. I know it's there. I don't need to see it. I don't need to see anything. I don't need to see anything about Jaja Gabor because I lived with her 35 years. And everything about Jaja Gabor is in my heart. It's all in my heart. So, and it's going to stay there as long as I live. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me on the mic. Thank you so much. I love Hungary. I love Budapest. You are great, great people. You must be great, otherwise I wouldn't be there 35 years. Believe me, it was difficult. Four Hungarians, can you imagine? Not only one, four. I had four and I was the only guy. The only guy. Four. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. 